Park Street is finally on both Android and iOS, and those of you just getting into it, here are some tips you should know before getting into game. Let's start off with the most obvious one, and that's is to play the story mode. With Park Street, you can blitz through the drift or sprint event, making sure you have enough cash to buy parts of vehicles to get into each race. You start with the junior race, which is the first event, and by playing throughout, you get more driving experience and level up faster to get access to some boss battles in each level. Park Street has two different mode apart from the main story mode, which is the sprint racing and the drift event. These are time lapse, side events to earn you more cash and keep track of your skills. Racing in this game is fun and not hard as other racing games. It's more about strategy. There are two types of currency in Kark Street, which is the silver coins and the gold coins. Earning cash in Kark Street is fairly straightforward. There are few ways to increase your payouts. Every so often you get the springtime race, which doesn't require any stage of upgrades and earn some cash depending on your placement. Near the end of the game, I decided to complete more of this event as you earn higher cash payouts by finishing first. I searched for the ones with less run time and higher rewards, then repeated it several times after finishing first. Most players find it boring doing it, but trust me, it's worth it. Of course, it's entirely up to you, but taking your week one of doing this will eventually give you more payouts. And then linking to my first tip, you earn more money as you progress through the story. Completing this spring events opens up newer once and that's when you get a larger cash payout which can reward you anywhere between 30 to 40,000 depending on the position you get. And to earn the gold coins, you'll need to defeat each boss in the final run of each level. As you play through the story, I will strongly recommend you to purchase more houses as you can. Most players don't even worry about their garage space, which is wrong. You can purchase all cars if you have the money, but guess what? You can't equip any of them if you don't have a house. So don't worry if you're purchasing them. It's worth it. Handling and control of this game is very much easier depending on your device. Most players use the button's control type, which is very bad on my opinion. I tried it for weeks and got nothing better out of it, and I feel like it's for newbies who aren't much into racing games. A lot of people don't even try out different controls to get a feel of how good they can be with it. All they do is to hop on and drive around like old granny playing Temple Run. Depending on your device type, I will advise you to master the steering wheel if you're on iPad and master the accelerometer, also known as tilt steering if you're on mobile. iPad with the accelerometer will make you get tired early due to the weight and size of it. Both controls are very useful, but steering wheel is the best. You get the function of those on Legitech steering wheels for other racing games and drive better than those on accelerometer. I want to make this easy as possible, so I won't go too deep since we're not here for the steering wheels. But let me know in the comments section if you want to know more of the steering wheel control. Filling the gas tank in this game is very frustrating to beginners. Everyone is trying to get to their goal which is to purchase their favorite car. But gas filling takes about 30% of their money every day. So try and save your money and purchase the ultimate fuel tank rather than upgrading your car. Fuel price costs the same on full even if you have the ultimate tank, which is basically a way of wasting money if you have the lowest tank. The ultimate tank takes about 1,200 kilo miles to finish, which can help you complete about four races without needing to buy any fuel. Note that not all the numbers I mention are accurate. They're all proximate numbers due to the different of distance in each race. And next, let's talk about multiplayer mode. Park Street Online Multiplayer Mode is a completely separate mode to single player, meaning is all about driving around having fun with random players. The online mode do not allow players to compete event together or increase your XP and levels, it only supports 1v1 race battle which gives 1000 to the winner. Tuning depends on you if you want more grip or drift. And drifting in Kark Street is completely different from Kark Drift. Upgrade parts are expensive, so mind buying the racing parts if you don't enough money. Max upgrade improves the performance, but it's not easy to earn it. The racing parts are also good. If you're on budget, I will advise you not to purchase a different engine. All the store engines doesn't give you the most accurate performance on most cars. Drifting is easy, but not all cars can drift. This is because it's a racing game in an open world game class. So players consider buying different drivetrain to complete a run or get to their desired destination by drifting throughout or in straightforward driving. Unlike Kark's Drift where all the drivetrains can perform like the RWD, you can't do that in Kark Street. The suspension upgrade is the most vital way for drift tune. 
tuning might take a while to understand if you're new, but it's easy. I have a drift tuning tutorial so I will leave that in the description if you want to know more about tuning. I've been asked multiple times to explain why I use manual transmission. It's simple, you become better than those with automatic transmission. Here's why. A manual gearbox is traditionally better at transferring power from your engine to your wheels, so you can accelerate at a faster pace. They also offer you better control of the vehicle, since the driver, not the car, is in charge of changing gears. If I will talk about the manual transmission, we'll spend the whole day learning. I will make a separate video to teach you how to use it. And this is why you should so consider hitting the subscribe button and turn on post notifications so you don't miss it when I post it. Don't worry about why your game isn't performing smooth and why your FPPS drops. The current state of the game is very bad and the game isn't well optimized, so if you're finding issues on your performance, try adjusting the settings to the most appropriate way to enjoy the game without lag. I will leave a link in the description if you want to have a smooth gameplay and better performance on both Android and iOS, if you're interested. And lastly, let's talk about the premium cars, which is very important. The premium cars are the most essential way to complete event faster and earn money quickly. You get to play event which requires some upgrades or tune. I will simply tell you to do the sprint event. If you purchase one of the premium cars, they've been modified with some upgrades that give you enough speed to complete it in time and earn huge money depending on the position, rather than purchasing the stock ones and rebuilding it. They come in stylish looks and are upgradable. I will suggest buying the MK4 or the 31 if you can afford them. They're all good in many ways. So those are the 10 tips I wish I knew before starting Kark Street Mobile. I have more videos coming out soon, so make sure to stick around. Thank you for watching, and I will catch you in the next video.